In this video, I want to talk you step by step through the process of installing your interface and setting it up in Studio One so that you can start out with your first recordings. If you have a Personas interface, then please go to my.personas.com and register your unit if you haven't done so already. Afterwards, you can head to the My Products tab, click on Hardware, and then select your interface to immediately download Universal Control, which is our driver, firmware, and control software for your interface. The installation process is incredibly straightforward, both for Windows as well as Mac. Simply run the installer, then specify which drivers you want to install. Probably easiest to just install all of them at once and click Install. Once the installation is finished, you can start Universal Control right away and adjust your settings. The next steps you can follow along no matter which kind of interface you have. This is not as complicated as it looks, don't worry. We start by connecting the audio interface to our computer. Next, you connect the cables of any audio source that you want to record to your interface inputs. In my case, I want to record a microphone and with condenser mics like this one, it is usually necessary to also engage 48 volt phantom power. Then turn up the gain of the input and start speaking into your microphone until you get some signal. This procedure would be pretty much the same also for a guitar and things like that. Okay, time to fire up Studio One. When you're on the start page, simply click in the lower middle where you find the audio device settings and then make sure that on macOS you change your playback and recording device or in Windows just your audio device to your new interface. We're ready to do our very first recording. So click on create a new song and just click OK because we don't want to use a template right now. And then you head up to song, song setup and switch to the audio IO setups tab. You're probably going to find a couple of inputs pre-configured already, but if you don't, then you can simply click on either add mono or add stereo channel, depending on whether what you've plugged into your input is a mono or a stereo source. Then you can simply double click the name to change it so you always know what actually is on that input. And then you have to make sure that box is ticked exactly where your source is connected to. In my case, my microphone is connected to input one. So that's why the input one box has to be ticked also. Now we're almost ready to go. We just click apply, hit okay, and then right click on our track list, create a new audio track. Then you click on that drop down arrow, make sure that your desired input source is selected and record arm your track by clicking on the round button. Should you not see that drop down menu, by the way, then simply adjust your track height a little bit until it appears. Now you're ready to record. Click the big red button down in the transport bar for record and you're ready to capture your very first idea. Should you still not be able to receive any input signal, then it's very likely that your operating system security settings are blocking the input from entering the computer. To change this, you have to go into your system privacy settings and make sure that the audio input for your interface as well as Studio One is actually allowed. For a more detailed walkthrough, please check my tutorial that you find in the Studio One support playlist.